What's going on guys, Casual Savage here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to use the Elgato Game Capture HD software. Okay, so, first of all, let's say you've just got an Elgato, that's why you're probably here. So, go ahead and check out this video which shows you how to set up all the wires and stuff on your Xbox One and 360. If you've got a PlayStation, I'm sorry about that, but yeah, that's what I only have. Then the next thing you want to do is go to this website, which will also be in the description, and download the software. So, you can see here is for Mac, here is for Windows 7 and 8, and here are the system requirements. So make sure you check them before downloading, and previous version, that is just if the system requirement is not up to your PC standards. So once you have downloaded it, you'll just run through some steps and then you'll get this. Now you can see my Xbox One is on, it's on FIFA 14 and here we go. Straight away, go to the settings up here. This is where you choose to save all of your videos. So you can see I saved mine on the desktop. Yours will be in the videos folder, so you can press change and then just click here or something and then just click select folder and it is done. Now enable flashback recording, now this is a bar that's here, so let's say you're not recording but you've got the Elgato Game Capture HD software up. If you want to go back and record something, this little flashback here can make the bar go back. You can go ahead and hit record and it will record what you actually missed. So that's a pretty good feature. I don't have it on because I think it messes up with the recordings but it's up, totally up to you what you want. Now here I've kept this default the entire time and I've had the Elgato for over a year now so yeah it's up to you if you want to change it. Next thing is here where it says device and click here. So capture straight away you just pick what device you're on or console there you go that's everything that's supported and other as well. HDMI it should be automatically done if you're using HDMI. If you're using anything else then you can be able to change it. Now HDMI color range is totally up to you which one you pick. I choose standard because I think it gives out better quality. Then profile HD 720 this is totally up to you. Now depending on your laptop or PC standards if it is really good then you would go to 1080. If it's not that good, well, let's say it is good, but it can't handle 1080, then go 720. Uh, now, if it's just an old laptop that you're using for a little bit until you get an upgrade, go to one of these. It will help your recordings, because if you go any higher, it will mess up your recordings a lot. And the next thing is quality. Now, you can see my quality is not at the best, and there is a reason for that. When you record and the quality is at the best and your PC is not the best, then the recordings come out choppy and they just mess up the editing and it makes it so much difficult for you so just turn it down a bit and the quality is really good if you watch my gaming channel you'll see I've had this same setting the entire time and these two I've kept checked the entire time as well picture I've kept the same as well it's up to you you can adjust it to see what it's like this is actually a little bit different compared to the picture I'm seeing on my TV. Like this part here is a bit brighter, so I can mess with the brightness here. But what the brightness actually changes, if I go down, it changes the brightness here. But if I go up, it changes the brightness on my TV. So it's totally up to you. You can mess with that if you want to. Next, we've got audio. I don't change that either. I think changing the gain does mess it up a lot. Then we've got profiles. You can add your own profile here. It's like a gamer tag. It's up to you. And then we've got advanced, where I showed you before. If your Elgato doesn't show up on your TV, then go ahead and check out my last video where I showed you how to actually fix it. And it is to do with this here. Okay, then we've got game audio. I've kept that default the entire time. You can see 0 dB. Now, the reason for that, I like the game sound being loud in recordings. Because my mic is good enough to handle it. And yeah, I like the game sound loud as I just said. So here we got live commentary. This is something I never use. So you can see if we press this, this turns on the mic here as you can see. And it is actually recording the live commentary right now. 
Now, I don't Good use point. that. I use Audacity instead. And you can see here, if you check this, it automatically reduces game sound. And here is the volume of the mic. I'd recommend putting it up a bit and maybe turning the game volume down if you do use it. The reason why I don't use it, because when I done it on my old laptop, I didn't like it. And it actually messed up recordings again, so I didn't use it anymore. Go over to the settings here. This is totally up to you. You can change it. I'm keeping it the same as always. Live streaming, you can, can stream straight to Twitch. It is a really good feature here. And what you gotta do is just set up an account. So add an account. You can see YouTube, Twitch, Ustream, and I'm not sure why that one is. Never heard of it, but yeah, that one as well. You just log into your account, set it up, and it's really simple. So make sure you keep that automatic because it'll keep you the best servers and connections and the quality of the video and then status message this is the title of the video while you're streaming and the bitrate I'll leave it default because it's going to give you the best quality again on the stream so once you've set all that up then you just want to click this button here which will start the stream now finally this part here video title game description and tags to be honest tags can go they don't mean anything description doesn't mean anything the only ones I use is video title and game. You can see this was my latest recording here and it's still here from the previous time I used Elgato software. And here we go. Video title, it can be anything you want. Words aren't censored so you can use swear words if you wanted, but it's totally up to you. I choose it what I think the video title of the upload will be. So then it makes it much easier when I edit and when I upload. And the game, I usually add the game, but you can see it's like I didn't add FIFA 14, I just added FIFA, I didn't want to be too precise. So COD, well Call of Duty, you can just go ahead and add COD in there instead. Now description and tags, as I said, don't matter, so you don't need to worry about them. And you can see this gives you a lot more information if you do decide to use all that stuff. So once you have chosen everything here, just click this button right here and boom your recording has now officially started so you can see the Elgato is actually delayed a bit it's delayed by about three seconds now that is why you should play on your normal TV not staring at the Elgato because obviously it is delayed so I just record that little clip there now once you have finished saving a video click that and by the way this is to take a screenshot of something when you're recording if you want to. So yeah, click that to record and click that to stop. Once you've finished, click edit. Now, once you have finished recording and you've clicked edit, there'll be a blue bar here of the video processing. My video is like 19 seconds, so it's gonna be a quick process. You want to wait for that process to be done until you record another video. The reason for that is because I found out it messes up video quality again. If you record, well, the Elgato software is processing another video and it will come up here as well you can see all the videos I've processed in the past and you can just clear that because it doesn't really affect it and then this is where the video will go and this is another reason why you should name the video so you can see if I had loads of recordings here I could just go ahead and search for it and it will be straight there for me and then once it is done what you can do you can press this right here and what this does is opens up the folder where the video is. And another thing about this, you can actually edit in this right here. This is the basic editor. This is the most basic editing software you're ever going to get, but it is good at the same time. I've never used it, I always use Sony Vegas, but it's up to you. So you can see all it is, well what you can do, you can start it wherever you want to, and you can end it whenever you want to, and you can snip the video. So we'll snip it there you can see we now have two parts one there one there and that is it is basically really simple and then you can zoom out you can zoom in I wouldn't recommend it it depends what video you're doing let's say you do a minecraft video because that editing does not require too much just you can edit in there but it's totally up to you and again you have the ability to screenshot here and then you can play through your recording here you can see it comes out nice and smooth unlike Vegas when you do it sometimes and yeah that is basically it that is everything apart from this last part here 
where you have the ability to share to YouTube, Facebook, all the social media stuff here. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, I never ever share with YouTube straight away because, like I said, I edit in Vegas, render it, and then upload it. So if you edit in here, you can actually share it straight to YouTube like this. And yeah, this is where your Google account will be, and then it you can just fill everything else in. Be sure to like my Facebook page and follow me on Twitter as I post gaming news and technology news daily. Also be sure to check out my gaming channel where I post daily. And finally be sure to add me on Snapchat where I just show you what I do throughout my day. So yeah, it's been Casual Savage here. I hope you have found this tutorial useful. Please subscribe, rate, and peace.